This is Emmer Shizzle's favorite song. <laughs> Ooh, baby, baby, baby. That's what I'm talking about. There's a cold paper up in the house. All right, it's All right let's go. The podcast is being brought to you by the National Association of Elementary School Principals. All right, welcome to the NASP Center for Innovative Leadership Video Podcast. Dropping a little salt and pepper your way. We're Andy Jackson, Hamish Brewer. Two of the fellows with the Center for Innovative Leadership. Andy is an elementary principal at the Ashland Elementary in Manassas, Virginia. And Hamish, me, I'm a middle school principal at the Fred Lynn Middle School in Woodbridge, Virginia. The Center for Innovative Leadership video podcast is about real school leaders doing real work all across the country right now. And how they're overcoming obstacles in unique and innovative ways. What can we learn from each other and their insight, their experiences to take back to our own school in school leadership? That's right. Today, we are so excited, super duper excited. We have Cindy Emerson from Florida, Vera Beach Elementary School in Vera Beach, Florida. We see her all the time doing amazing work. Today, Cindy's going to share about her school. We have a video and we're going to chat all about it. And uh, what do you think, Cindy? What, are you excited to be with us or what? Oh my goodness, I am so pumped to be here and just share the magic that's happening around my campus and hopefully help spark that around the country. Well, nice. I'll tell you what, we got Emerson here on here, AKA a Sizzle. <laughs> All right, so we're super excited. I know I've been waiting for this one to drop for a long time. We've worked hard to connect, you know, in between vacations and the state and national conferences were finally able to make it happen and i just got to tell you folks out there you this is what you really need to know about the sizzle not just that she takes schools and helps improve them but she is like the princess of the bahamas this girl <laughs> navigates the the oceans and sharks and crocodiles and everything in between to go to the bahamas and andy and i and now our audience will live a little more vicariously through the sizzle whose boat, I believe, is called East Sizzle type of thing. And then finally, just from a standpoint of mine, being a fireman, I know her husband's a fireman, and a shout out to our brother firemen. But welcome to the show. Tell us all about you, Sizzle. Yeah, so yeah, we, we crossed over a couple of times to the Bahamas this year. The boat is Fish Sizzle, you know, Emerson <laughs> Sizzle on Fish Sizzle. And I have two boys and all they want to do is fish and um, free dive. And so it's been giving us a lot of opportunity to spend time together because, you know, when the school year starts, the work begins and we go hard and we go all the way. And my whole family supports that. Um, like you mentioned, my husband's a firefighter and we just love that both of us have jobs where we can give back to the community. And, um, you know, he inspires me every day to just give a little bit more and a little bit more. And I hope that our, our kids see that and our students around here see it and, and that it inspires them to give back to. Yeah, and, and we've talked a lot about, I know Hamish has experience being a firefighter and uh, we work with our local fire department. We even had a whole staff visit the fire department and uh, learn the strategies they use to just stay on top of their game, save lives, those kinds of things. And definitely with a spouse, you guys probably talk about sort of, in some ways, you probably don't talk about your jobs, but in other ways, you talk about it all the time. So any lessons you learned from him about kind of something that crossed over in education about being a firefighter? Oh, my gosh, so many lessons. But I think just um, staying human in it and recognizing mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the, people's, uh, the people that we're working with, they all have obstacles and we're all human. Mm -hmm. And just appreciating that experience, not getting desensitized, not becoming numb to what we're seeing day in and day out, you know, I bring it home on the side of trauma. He brings it in on, you know, a different version of trauma. And we just, we try to keep each other grounded in, mm -hmm. in the work and what's the purpose and what's the why behind it. And um, that has been really helpful for both of us. Yeah. You know, Sizzle, I talk a lot of the time when I compare my time in the fire service with, with school, you know, every time the fire alarm goes or the school doors open for kids, you know, we're saving lives. It doesn't matter if we're in the fire service or education, we're in the work of changing the outcome for students, for their community and saving lives. So I think it's really cool. But uh, one last question before we jump into the video, Andy, 
I mean, how big was that fish? Was that fish like this big or like how big was that fish sizzle? Oh my gosh, the mahi we were reeling in, they were huge. And so, you know, it was just so exhilarating. I don't know if you guys do a lot of fishing, but like when you hear me and the line goes off, everybody's up and it's, it is just adrenaline pumping. And, you know, it reminds me of the school year when the school year starts and everything's zipping and zooming and you can just see, you know, the passion, the excitement kicks in. And we are in our first day back with staff today, and I feel it on the campus. That's what I'm talking about. First day back, Andy. That's hot. We really decided to keep the big thing the big thing this year. And so we kind of scaled back on um, some of the woot woot stuff, but we are really excited because we've been making a lot of progress, and we're about keeping momentum going strong. So we've brought our school from an F to a C, and, you know, the work's not done. We are not stopping until we are an A school. You know, our job is to make our community proud of us again, because um, for a while there, it was a little scary what was happening on our campus. And Mm so we're ready to just win everybody back. Like we want kids and parents, you know, banging down our front door begging to come to this school. And you you know what, I really appreciate that because uh, that's really the work. It's not about the whoop whoop sometimes. Sometimes, you know, Andy and I had that very conversation this afternoon was about you know, making sure we're focused on the main thing. So kudos to you. And uh, we know you're definitely doing the work. So I'd love to go see some of it, Andy. What do you say? Yeah, and, and every community, every child deserves to feel special about their school and proud of their school and the work that you guys yeah. do there. So that's awesome hearing you say that. So let's go ahead and take a look on exactly what you are talking about. All right, so this is Vero Beach Elementary. And um, my assistant principal and I have kind of a unique story and how we ended up here. We were placed on this campus three and a half years ago, um, mid-January. There was over a thousand referrals, um, just a lot of trauma happening on the campus. There was about 17 um, unstable classrooms. Most of them had rotating substitutes daily. And we just really needed to come in and um, observe and figure out what we need to do for kids because it was not working at that time. So, so what, are we seeing? what are we seeing here now? So this is on the front door of our school. So anyone that walks up, they can immediately see our vision, our mission, and the passion we have behind leading this school. Um, you know, we do call ourselves lead learners and we really believe in that. It is not about having all the answers, but um, you know, willing to recognize we all are, are all growing in this and um, we're in it together. And that includes our families. You know, our families are part of the growth process and we've definitely opened the doors to them. We've had them have a voice of what they want to see at our school. And what they want is, we call it a slide into innovation. They want to see that the kids are having opportunities for science and literacy daily, inquiry, design, engineering, that we're not just a testing school. We're not just in it to skill, kill, and drill our kids. And yep, we came in and it was underperforming and a lot of people would take that route and we refused. We said, nope, that is not what we're here for. We're about the whole child. And I think our parents have appreciated that and um, they like that vision and they've been a part of making it. So I think that that gives ownership. And so this is the front entrance way into our school. So um, we are the little Indians. And so we really try to bring bring it back to understanding that we're a tribe, we're in it together. And so right up front, you can see all of our staff and their one word that they have used to um, set their goals and their intentions for the year. Parents will sit there and stare at it. It is really fun to watch them looking at our entire staff and and what they believe in. So so one of our goals is to give people direct takeaways. And I think this is one. I know uh, a lot of people do the one word piece. Mm -hmm. And How do you then show that out there, right? Sometimes we've even made videos and all that. I like this idea of just real clear. It's probably up there for the year, up there for at least a decent amount of time. And um, you can see right away like, oh, there's my teacher and that's their word. Uh, That's pretty neat. It also holds us accountable to the words. So sometimes we're walking by and we're like, hey, remember your word was hope. (laughs) Yeah, sometimes they do it almost. They would do that back to you. Hey, your word was hope. Remember that? (laughs) You're like, okay, okay. (laughs) And then we talked about, um, here, let's jump ahead because we talked about some of these different, there we go. Oh yeah. So when we first got over to VBE, it was a school that had been rebuilt from a previous campus. And so it's beautiful, but it was sterile. And so there was nothing about the learning environment that showed that it was a caring and loving school. 
So we really took a lot of time to figure out how to make the learning space, all spaces, educational, academic, and loving. So you'll see a lot of images of our students on the wall. Um, I do photography and I um, really enjoy that. And so I get to go into classes and recognize where, um, where there's growth. <laughs> so here's my staff. They are absolutely amazing. And to do a real turnaround, I think you have to bring in the right people. And I've been so fortunate to have such a loving, compassionate group of educators who are there for each other. They're there for kids. And um, this is one of the things we do each year, just to team build and collaborate and remind each other that we're human and we're in this together. So we do a retreat. It's um, not paid. Everyone just volunteers and comes. And we give away staff swag, um, t-shirts and hats and things so that when we go out in the community, we can show how proud we are that we work at VBE, which was definitely not the case when we came in. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that was really sad about our school was that a lot of the negative connotations out in the community were coming from within. You know, they were coming from our families, they were coming from our staff that was um, struggling. And rightfully, there was a lot of things that were not working here and we needed to bring the team together. And so we do this every year. Actually, we just did it Saturday, the new retreat. And um, it's one of my favorite events of the year. And we really value our staff. And um, what we just showed, that was our golden arrows. Every month at our faculty meeting, our staff members, we have three who earn it each month. They get to then pick a different member of our team. Um, as you can see there, it's a, there was one of our custodial engineers, um, one of our STEM teachers. They get to pick one person that they feel has gone above and beyond for them, and they recognize them in front of our entire staff and faculty. And they get to carry that heart around and hold it in their classroom for the month, and then they get to pick the next person that's been such a big culture builder for us because it's not coming from admin and it shouldn't See, you know okay. yeah so let's talk about that because again that's something uh that's done a lot of different ways right so so why did you choose to do it this way um how sustainable is it you know how do they take it that kind of thing um i really wanted it to be the people who are um day in day out putting in the work that i don't always see you know, it, it's really about recognizing every single um, staff member on our campus that is doing everything they can for kids. So I don't know how, how your, um, your planning and preparation goes with your custodians, but mine all pick a target with students. And so it's not just about working on the campus and keeping it clean. And that is part of it. It's also about how are they helping us create a loving environment that's, um, you know, has social emotional targets and you know, it, it is not uncommon to see them get down in the hallway and work with a kid that's struggling or um, working on de-escalation strategies. I want them recognized for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it has allowed us to just keep a pulse on all of the game changers on our campus that are doing great things, mm -hmm. not just teachers, not just front office, but everybody. That's fantastic. Um, and so we talk about the VBE vibe, and that goes back um, to our PBIS strategies with our students, but we also have the vibe for our educators. And so we expect them, and this was something that came from what wasn't happening prior to us coming in. I sat down with every staff member. I said, what's working? What, what do you not want me to touch? And what is something that you wish your colleagues were held accountable for? And that brought us to the vibe. And so you know, we expect each other to visualize success, inspire learning, believe in the tribe, and that means inside and outside of the community, and exceed expectations. You know, we've got to make two years of growth with every kid to get them caught up, and they deserve that. And so um, we have to go above what everybody else is doing around the district and, you know, be passionate about that. And it kind of leads right into this right here. This is literacy, like, times a million we did a huge explosion here. Uh, we did some home visits over the summer two years ago, and we were just recognizing our students did not have books at home. I'm sorry, my lights just went out. Hold on. <laughs> 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 okay, so we just recognized we had book deserts across our, the homes in our community, and whether they were living out of motels or the homeless shelter, or it was their home, they didn't have libraries. And so it just became our passion and maybe my passion project. 
honestly, um, because I just felt like if our kids had opportunity to read, they would. And so we were able to get a grant and we brought our students in and we um, let down the curtain on a massive scholastic book fair and allowed every kid to pick any 11 books that they want. And we did that across our entire school. What you're seeing here is actually phase two. And so the teachers did not know this, but another part of the um, concern when you have like a, a lot of new staff is that they don't have classroom libraries. They just haven't had time to um, build them up. So we brought them in. I had Scholastic bring in a whole new fair and they each got to pick $400 worth of books for their classroom libraries. And, um, you know, even teachers that were a little resistant at first, oh no, our kids aren't gonna wanna read. And I'm like, no, 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 they will. You just have to get the right material in front of them. Mm -hmm. Give them opportunities for graphic novels, um, for the newest Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Mm -hmm. And um, anyone who was in, you know, disbelief initially, they came around and they were shocked. And I, I really believe that that is part of the reason why we saw um, a 9% increase in proficiency at our school in ELA. If, yeah. if I was a principal watching this, how could I replicate it? Do I reach out to Scholastic? Is there a grant I can apply for? Yeah, so I would say reach out to your community first. We have a lot of philanthropy groups and they wanna help, but they're never given direction of what to do. So if you have ELKS, reach out to the ELKS. If you have an education foundation, reach out to them. Um, car dealerships, a lot of them, they wanna help out the schools, but they don't know how. So say, hey, can I get $15,000? Can you give me $15,000 so I can get, you know, two books in the hands of every kid at my school? You'd be surprised how much people in the community wanna help. They're just not given the, the um, opportunity. And so when people in the community found out about what we were doing and our big push on literacy, they started banging on our doors asking, what, what can we do to get in on this? How can we support you? Um, we actually had a dealership stop by and they wanted to give more books to the kids. And so we, um, what you might've saw is we also surprised our teachers in December with a field trip to Scholastic Book Warehouse. And I brought them there. If you've never gone to one of their warehouse sales, go immediately. Um, they're amazing. And so they got another $400 to spend on their classroom libraries. And then right before the holidays, we let the kids get another two books. Cool. And we just consistently provided opportunities for rich literature in the hands of our students and our, and our staff. And they start reading. It you know, looks like we're doing book talks here. Yes. Okay. So the kids love Snapchat. And if you're not using that as a tool, what are you doing? Because our kids will hunt us down so that they can do the book snap of the day. We let them pick like what, what they want to wear or the goggles or, um, you know, the puppy dog ears, and we do it with them. And it's 30 seconds. They just give a quick, brief overview of the book that they're reading and why other kids should read it. Um, this is embarrassing, but it's also awesome. I ran a fifth grade book group this year, and at lunch, the kids would come out once a week and read with me. And um, we started with Miss Bigsby's Last Day, which is awesome. And it was actually for malicious intent. I had a kid that I really was trying to pull in behaviorally. And we ended up with 32 kids reading um, by Jason Reynolds' Ghost and then Patina. And we ended up in the national book talk. It was like 30 second book talk. Oh, yeah. and we got in the final and our students were so excited. Um, there's not volume on that, but you should look it up, look it up with Beer Beach Elementary because we did it to Ice Ice Baby, which it was really fun. <laughs> so this, this is what I'm probably most excited about. Um, it's like the Pinewood Derby. So cool. So when I first got to BBE, we had um, a lot of behavioral problems at our specials. Um, and so I'm from middle school. I only did middle school experience and came in as an elementary school principal with no elementary experience. And so I just noticed our fifth graders really lacked leadership. Um, they, they struggled. And so I said, why don't we go with an elective model for our specials? And I was able to bring in um, a music teacher that had band experience. That was my first goal. My kids are musically talented. Academically right now, they're not there yet. But if I can give them one advantage before they leave here, let me do that for them. And so our fifth graders are the only ones in the district that have a full band program. They leave VBE playing the French horn if they choose this elective, um, the flute, the saxophone, whatever instrument they're fitted to. 
and they get to go right into symphonic band instead of beginning band in middle school. Please give your kids an advantage of some kind. Um, what was happening was one of the other specials. Um, we have a STEAM special. And so the kids got to design from blueprint and go through the entire design process of building a box car and then we raced them. It was amazing. And the dealerships came by, they wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to watch the kids learn how to engineer and do the st um, steering mechanisms and the kids can speak to it. You know, um, this is our track team. <laughs> it's kind of obnoxious because we win first place in almost everything. Wow. But that's why it's great because when we came into VBE, um, we would participate in the track meets, but a lot of our students wouldn't show up. The families really didn't believe in the school at that point. And so we had a hard time rallying people and now we're the obnoxious ones. We have the flag, we bring it out. Like people don't want their kids racing our kids because they know we're gonna dominate. And it feels good for our kids to be number one. And they're owning the school. They're going on Instagram and Snapchat and bragging. They're going on, oh, this is my great editing skills. They're going and, and they wanna showcase that they go to VBE. Their parents wanna buy our school shirts and they wanna go out in the community now and share that their kids are part of this innovation and this change in our community. And it, it's meaningful. Um, this was at our basketball tournament and our girls actually ended up winning the entire tournament of all the elementary schools. And it just felt good to see people celebrate VBE. And so instead of um, people being fearful, oh, VBE, you know, they have a lot of problems at that school. Academically, they're not stable. You know, look at these kids. They love our school now and they really feel like it's meeting their needs. And that is what I came here for. You know, it's great that we're moving up with letter grades, but it's more important that kids feel good about themselves and they're finding their purpose. They're finding their passion. Well, and you talk about building momentum, right? Because you have to really take any win, small, big yeah. that you can get to get that boulder move and create that massive momentum going. So you take anything you can get. Yeah. Uh, that's such a great point. Um, you know, the better they feel about the school, the more invested they're going to be, right? Absolutely. So what's this? Okay, so we decided um, our students, they were anxious about our Florida testing. And so we took a Maroon 5 song and we redid the lyrics to it. And um, the kids now will go around singing the song. And it just brought unity to our school. You know, sometimes it's little things like that that help the kids know that we're a team, we're in it together. And um, this is embarrassing too. I'm so glad the volume's not on, but I'm like moderately rapping, not very good. But then one of our students found out that me and one of my fifth grade teachers were doing this and she asked to be a part of it. And so she's about to go on right now. This is what it's about. It's about her. It's about our kids feeling that they have purpose and they have value in our school and then wanting to contribute. And I think it is such a beautiful, way of showing our growth as a school because you know this child was here when I first got there and to see her mature over the last few years it brings such joy to my heart and I feel good about her going to middle school I feel like we did right by our fifth all right. All right. can you hear this if I play if I play can you hear it oh yeah all right let's hear it this this line right here I heard a little bit Awesome. Yeah. Nothing can stop us, right? Nice, nice. So nice. Sometimes, you know, I maybe want someone to stop me, like when I'm dancing, but you know. That's what it's about. Yeah, you know, Sizzle, just uh, watching that uh, video, I can relate so much to it. You know, I see, I see so many similar things. Like, if I'm a principal uh, that wants to learn from you a bit more, you know, like, what, were the, what would you put down as the three of the core things that you achieved yeah. in that short time? So if I'm going into a new school, maybe a similar situation, yeah. what advice would you give to a principal facing that situation? I would say one, sit down and talk with your staff one-on-one. -on -one. Find out what is something sacred, what's traditional here that like you really don't wanna touch. 
and then find out what do they feel their colleagues are missing? What is it that um, can be added and, and bring value to the community and the core of this school as a whole and build on that culture and let it come from them. You know, like I think far too often leaders come in already with an idea of what they want to do and what they want to change. And you're not going to get ownership that way. You really have to build it based on what your staff's needs and wants are. And that will get them to buy into it. And you can change um, the culture so much quicker when they have input. Number two, make literacy a focus. It should be what everybody's talking about. Kids should be carrying around books. You should see it. It shouldn't just be something people speak of, but the actions on your campus should show that literacy is a major focus and that your adults are talking about books, the kids are talking about books, and you make that a part of the daily interaction among everyone on campus, including parents. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing I would say, you know, um, just choice and voice for kids. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to make sure that their gifts, what, what they are um, able to really thrive in that you're giving opportunities for that make it happen for them because they they are capable of so much more than a lot of um, traditional academic structures allow for mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. just break down those yeah. barriers and I would add a fourth one in there that stands out for me which I like to focus on a lot too and I know Andy does a beautiful job with this himself it's the arts you know music sound yes. performance dance it's amazing how critical those things are and how, how much of a massive impact it has. Yet it's one of the things in education today that we have to fight because it's too easy to give those things up. And I applaud you for fighting back against status quo and, and, and putting that back into your school and making it a focus. But I mean, a principal watching this today is going to learn so much, Andy. Yeah, and we talked about the we talked about winning earlier, and the arts goes similar to that. When you create a good product, and, and in our school, we talk about making if the students are going to create a product, whether it's uh, you're talking about your cars, you know, that they made, or if they have a concert, if they have a basketball game, whatever it's going to be, make it be the best version they could possibly yeah. do. And that's our job to help sort of elevate and amplify what they're doing to make it the best version that they could do. So that not only do they look good, but they feel good. There's a sense of like, when you, you know, you have a good concert or something just sounds awesome. You, yeah. You're in the moment, you feel it. Well, they, the kids feel that too. And that really, I think uh, has a big impact on how they view themselves um, and their sort of success and their overall well being. And, and you can help create a better version of that or not, depending on how involved you get and how much you push them. Right. Yeah. And uh, when you create that, higher sense of uh, what they can accomplish. They view themselves that way too. I mean, I just have been really lucky because coming in that under such extreme urgent need, um, I've been able to go back to the, to the district that I work in at Indian River County Schools and say, this is what I think we need. And they've, they've never said no. Mm. They've never said no to me. So, you know, um, I think we need to bring project-based learning. All right, start small, prove that it can work, go. Um, I really need to change the electives. I, I want to give kids more opportunity. And like, I think the thing is, even though I've never been told no, but I'm passionate. So I, I think they're maybe afraid sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know what, Sizzle? Uh, yeah, I've, never, I've never met an, a, a school division that doesn't want to stand up for a principal doing the right thing. A principal right. calling for kids. Mm -hmm. You're owning your brand, telling the story, and you're actually putting the work in. It's not just talk, mm -hmm. it's action, and you're getting real results, doing real work, getting real results every day. Mm -hmm. And you know what? 100%. You have a plan, you have a mission, you have a focus. The whole community knows it. You know it. It's super exciting. Look, here's what I want to ask you, Sizzle. You know, we want to know what's coming up next for you and where can we find you online? We know you're a bit of a Disney fanatic. Is there one ride Whoa. that Andy and I should be going on that you should be telling us all to go and ride at Disney? What's up? Oh, God, you better get on Pandora. I'll tell oh. you what's up. I'm really excited about the whole Star Wars. But, um, you know, like, that's really what it's about. We talk about learning experiences, and we want to bring the magic to VBE. We have kids here who they were excited on a field trip because they got to see a toll booth for the first time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we came back to campus and we said, how can we make this place magical for kids? Because if they're not going to get it beyond the four walls of our school, we need to bring it here. And so um, my staff asked, what's our theme this year? I said, well, it was, you know, um, if you can dream it, you can do it last year. We're keeping that. We're going to stay magical. Oh, yeah. You know, like yes. the magic continues. It's not Amen. over. Yep. And I think Amen. the kids will find value in that. We don't have to always change the theme. Yes. Every yes. Up. 
Yeah, we do. I mean, you're preaching the choir here. I think the school leaders focus so hard on these themes and they, they change it too much. And you really look at, if you want to embed something in like the real culture and, and how people really think and feel for a long time, you got to stay focused cool. on those messages yeah. over and over and over again. You know what, guys? Big thing, the big thing. Yeah. 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 And you know what? Culture don't take breaks. Mm -hmm. No. You don't take a break because it's a new year. Mm -hmm. That's where you find out what your culture is all about. All right, Sizzle, what's next and where can we find you? Tell the audience. All right, you can find me at Emmer Sizzle on Twitter. You can find us at Vero Beach Elementary um, on Instagram and Twitter. We're all over the place. And the next thing is we are going to continue on the path of project-based learning too. We're ready to set sail with that. We already did it with our kindergarten, with vertical aeroponic gardens. We're bringing it to first grade. We're bringing it to third, fourth, and fifth. It's on. And um, we're ready to bring real world relevant learning for our kiddos. That's awesome, man. We are so excited to get you on. Thanks, Cindy. We appreciate it, my friend. Uh, it was great hanging out with you at the national conference. And uh, what a great, so you have so much that you've delivered to uh, all, the, all the principals out there. So thank you so much. Yeah, reach out if you have any questions. Yeah, so don't forget all of you uh, viewers and listeners out there to go to our webpage at www.nesp.org slash CIL on the NESP website. They have blog articles they make out of these things as well as we post them for podcasts and the video itself. Um, and make sure you sign up. If you want to share your story with you, with us and with all these principals out there, we're trying to get uh, the voice of all of these principals, assistant principals, school leaders across the country. Maybe you've never had a voice or, and you want to share insight. Even at the national conference, we had people just coming up randomly to the stage and they had such great uh, ideas and strategies that they could share uh, with all of us. So we're looking for more of this. Make sure you go online and sign up and talk to us. Um, also check out uh, Hamish at Brewer HM and myself at underscore Andy Jacks and uh, go on our YouTube channel as well. So otherwise, uh, I think that was a good show, guys. What do you think? That was outstanding, Sizzle. That was outstanding. Yeah. All okay. right. Remember, don't stagnate, innovate. innovate. <laughs> all right. Take care, you guys. All right.